Okay, our next video is going to look through two different applications of Sokatoa, how we can use it. Uh, the first is with a word problem. In order to construct a bridge across a river that runs east to west, so that's referring to the river, not the bridge. So the bridge is going to have to go from here to here. The width of the river at that location must be determined. We call that W for the width, because that's what they described it as. Notice how as I go through the problem, I start marking it up. I start drawing what being, what's being described. That way I don't get to the end of the paragraph and I'm just overwhelmed by trying to figure out what everything's talking about. Suppose a stake is planted on one side of the river, call that A, directly across from a second stake on the opposite side. So as soon as I talk about a point or a line segment or anything, I will label it. Um, at a distance of 50 meters to the west of the stake on the southern bank. So I'm going to move that A. I'll rewrite that because if I'm going to the west, I want to have room over here to go to the west. So at a distance of 50 meters to the west. From this spot, and notice how I labeled the side W, which means that I'm going to label this point W2. If I don't, it's not the end of the world. It just makes it a little bit easier later on if my naming, naming is consistent. So at a distance of 50 meters to the west of the stake on the southern bank, an angle of 82 degrees is measured between the two stakes. Now this is not drawn to scale very well because 82 degrees is, is quite big and it's hard to draw. It like my 50 meters would look very small. But that is an 82 degree angle. And we want to find the width of the river. I can't stress enough that the important part here was that I drew as I read. You can read through once if you want, just to kind of understand what's happening, and then read through again and draw as you read, label as you go. That way, when you get to the end and it says find the width of the river, I can see exactly what was described on the table we started where we list what to do in every situation. Here, I see one angle and one side, and I'm looking for a second side. By the way, we do know that this is a right angle only because we saw the words west and south. We know that they make a 90 degree angle. So we can look back to our chart if we need to and say, all right, what do you do if you have one angle and one side, or one angle and one side, and we're looking for another side, we're going to use Sokotoa to do that. Make sure you think it through, because sometimes you'll use the Pythagorean theorem, sometimes you'll use the inverse trig. Make sure you kind of work it all out. So what I'm going to say, using the 82 degree angle, I've got the opposite leg and the adjacent leg. I don't need the hypotenuse, which means tangent is the way to go here. Tangent of 82 degrees is equal to my W that I'm looking for divided by 50. And so the W, if I cross multiply, is equal to 50 times the tangent of 82 degrees. And again, with these degrees, you're, that's not mental math that you can do. So you would go in and type that one in. 50 times the tangent of 82 degrees. Do make sure to always check, see if you're in rating or degree mode to make sure. Um, go back to your diagram and say, all right, I already forgot the number, 355.8, so we'll call that 356 feet apparent, sorry, meters, approximately. Now I know that it doesn't quite look like that on my drawing, and this is where you gotta be careful about scale. If I were to draw it a little bit better, this 82 degree angle would have been a lot steeper. It would have been more like this. In which case, it would have made sense that if that side is 50, then this side is a lot bigger. It's just hard to draw that 82 degree angle in a real diagram. The next application we're gonna look at is sometimes we're given our information in different ways. Sometimes they'll tell you directly what the side of an angle is, or what the, the measure of an angle, or the measure of a side. Other times they'll give you 
the same information but a little less direct. So in triangle ABC, sorry, in right triangle ABC, right triangle ABC, and there's not a lot you can do to make sure that this is drawn to scale. You're not getting quite that much information. We've got a right angle, and we're told that the cosine of angle A is two-fifths. Well, what that means to me is one of the non-right angles is two-fifths, and its cosine, which is its adjacent over hypotenuse, is 2 over 5. So if I want to identify the tangent of angle A, I need to know what is this opposite leg here, so that way I can put it over 2, put it over the adjacent. And so we think to ourselves, like, all right, we've got a right triangle here. I don't know what that angle is, and I don't want to use arc cosine to find out what angle A is, because it won't be an exact number. It won't be very pretty, and I want an exact number unless you're told to round. But we can look back to our chart again if we want to, and remember that if we're ever told two sides in a right triangle and we're looking for the third side, all we need is the Pythagorean theorem and we can find that third side. So I will set up the Pythagorean theorem. Notice how this angle is across from angle A, so I can call it side A. I can say that the sum of the squares of the legs squared plus a squared, add up to the sum of the hypotenuse. So a squared equals 25 minus 4 is 21. And a is not a pretty number, but if I wanted to write it exactly, the square root of 21. And this way I'm not rounding, I'm, I'm using the exact number. And so the tangent of angle a, just using the definition of tangent, the ratio of the opposite leg over the adjacent leg. And that would be your final answer. If you do want to check this real quickly in Desmos just to see if everything you did is right, you can ask the calculator, ask Desmos to tell you what is the arc cosine of two fifths. So the angle whose cosine is 2 fifths, that would be our angle A. And then we can ask Desmos to find the tangent of that angle. I get 2.291. Now, I don't really know if that's right, because my answer was the square root of 21 over 2. But I can always check and see what the square root of 21 over 2 is. So this isn't really helpful for getting the answer. But when you start getting to square roots, it's hard to know just by looking if your answer is reasonable or not. You can use Desmos to check and see if you're right once you have an answer to try.